ओम भूर्भुवस्वितूर्वरेण्यं भर्गो देव से धीमे धियो यो न प्रचोदयात ओम शांति 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 नमस्ते माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो ऑन फोर्टी वर्सेस ऑन रियलिटी These forty verses were written by Bhagwan Sri Ramana Maharshi at the request of Murugnar, a close disciple of Maharshi. Murugnar wanted a concise synopsis of Ramana's teaching and wanted forty verses to fit a classical Hindu poetic form. Ramana. wrote the verses as they came to him and murugnar arranged them in a particular order later ramana wrote 40 additional verses and the original 40 verses were put into a supplement to the 40 verses advaita non duality identity is the supreme doctrine expressed in these verses gyan marga the path of knowledge is the approach to it self enquiry who am i is the technique bhagwan taught for this path there is no more profound and comprehensive statement of it than his 40 verses on reality or it is called uladu narpadu in tamil so i start the video on 40 verses on reality <coughs> invocation awareness is the nature of reality without uh, awareness of reality can a reality exist because this awareness reality itself free from thought exist as the source of all thoughts it is called heart how to know it to be as it is thought free in the heart is to know it this verse and the next form the invocation which customarily precedes spiritual and poetic works in indian literature it may be addressed to a particular deity such as ganpati the deva in charge of poetic effusions or to the devas in general to a favorite devi or to the guru or to one of the three major divinities but bhagwan recognizing a single reality from which all things proceed makes his dedication to that as the pure awareness chit abiding in the heart as external existent satpai or the absolute brahma the literal translation of the first sentence of this verse reads can there be awareness of that which is other than existence this makes knowledge or awareness the criterion of existence because the non existent cannot make itself known the color for example that is not visible or the sound that is not audible amount to nothing invocation verse second fear of death is the driving force behind the quest for immortality those who have an infinite fear of death 
टेक रिफ्यूज इन द फीट ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड हु इज विदाउट बर्थ एंड डेथ कैन द थॉट ऑफ डेथ अकर टू दोज हु हैव डिस्ट्रॉयड देयर आई एंड माइंड एंड हैव बिकम इमोर्टल दोज हु मोस्ट आइडेंटिफाई देम सेल्व विद द बॉडी आर द पीपल who fear death most seeing the dissolution of the body they deduce their own dissolution to be simultaneous with it and dread the terrible unknown that lurks behind it their only hope of safety lies there in the worship of the almighty lord who alone is it deathless but those who through the practice of sadhana or spiritual discipline have transcended this false identification no longer have bodies to be the victims of death even the thought of death does not occur to them they are with a hers bodiless although they continue to occupy a body this verse also implies that by taking refuge in the lord these fear torn people will in course of time so progress spiritually that they will be able to destroy their sense of i and mind and attain immortality since the death of the ego will evidently destroy death and the thought of death now first verse awareness is all the seer and seen the real and apparent because the world is seen we have to infer a common cause a lord possessing unlimited powers to appear as the diversity the pictures consisting of names and forms the seer the canvas the light all these are he himself the forty begins here to understand bhagwan's meaning we have to use the key with which he supplies us in the invocation there he declares reality to be thought free awareness which dwells in the heart here brings in the world in order to meet on their own ground those disciples who do perceive a real external world he is saying something like this you see a world and ascribe an omnipotent creator to it but as we have already seen this creation is only an appearance a manifestation of that awareness of which we were speaking it has no more reality in itself than have the pictures projected on a screen from the heart thoughts spontaneously rise like vapor from the ocean and turn into a kaleidoscopic world of names forms colors sounds smells and other impressions these are in it or on it as on a canvas of is the heart is itself the seer and the sight pure consciousness or pure mind is thus the pictures the screen the seer and the light or sight second verse the tried god soul and world is the creation of the ego and disappears with the ego 
all schools of thought postulate the fundamental triad god soul and world although all three are manifestations of the one the belief that the three remain eternally last only as long as the i or ego lasts to destroy the ego and remain in one's own state is best most religions are based on the assumption that the triad mentioned in the text is eternal bhagwan rejects this assumption as being the child of the ignorant ego which mistakes itself for the body the i am the body notion compels the admissions of an individuality jiva evolved its creator as three distinct perennial coexisting entities bhagwan as we have seen perceives a single existence of which these three are an illusory manifestation which however vanishes the moment the eternal i is apprehended and the ego perishes verse number 3 speculations about god and world avail nothing self realization is the heart's cry of all of what avail to debate whether the world is real or unreal sentient or insentient pleasant or unpleasant extinguishing the ego transcending the world realizing the self that is the state which is dear to all and free from the sense of unity and duality the same line of thought continues destruction of the ego is a sine qua non for the realization of the self within the heart it brings to an end all speculation about reality and unreality god and world whose true nature will be revealed in actual experience this is the most blissful attainable state and beyond the plurality of the illusory world verse number 4 form and formlessness of the god depend on the ego's conception of itself if the self be with the form god and the world will be also if one be formless one self how and by whom can their forms be seen can there be sight without eyes the self is the i the limitless i this refers to the gyani who although having a body seen himself as bodiless and formless and so cannot see god or in fact see anything with form the agyani the non realized perceiving himself as a body takes god also to be body and worships him in all sorts of material formal representations yet the fact remains that even the that even he perceives everything through his own formless self which we have granted to be the only seers the only knowledge there is the limitless i those who condemn idol worship forget that they themselves worship material symbols and icons and attribute to god forms dimensions positions 
even sentiments and sense perceptions exactly as they do to themselves having no experience or conception of a formless omniscient spirit they feel literally lost lost at the idea of worshiping something not represented in a form god thus appears according to the degree of realization of one's self can there be sight without eyes means that without consciousness there can be no knowledge of anything just as without a lamp none of the objects present in a dark room can be seen can there be a world to an unconscious man verse 5 the world is the body inclusive of the five seats for without them the world cannot be conceived or perceived the body is in the form of and includes the five seats is there a world apart from the body has anyone without a body seen the world the body is a complex structure containing a large number of instruments or organs which the self as ego uses for a large number of purposes including among others those of hearing smelling seeing thinking feeling memorizing and reasoning the materials out of which these instruments or parts are made vary from the grossest to the finest the shastras scriptures have arranged them in five groups to each group one seat of kosha is assigned the kosha dealing with purely physical matter is called anme kosha the seat of food the pranamaya kosha the vital seat looks after the fivefold functions of the vital energies breathing assimilation generation excretion and locomotion the manomaya kosha mental seat contains the faculties of mentation the vigyanamaya kosha is the seat of the intellectual and reasoning faculties of scientific and philosophic thinking and last is the anandame kosha the seat of bliss or causal seat which stores up within itself the karmic seeds of every birth and is concerned with that state in which profound peace is enjoyed by the dreamless sleeper this kosha is made of the finest substance sattva which in itself is happy due to its freedom from grossness and its close proximity to the blissful self thus the term body includes all these koshas whose appearance and disappearance cause the appearance and disappearance of all objective and subjective perceptions assumption of a body is therefore necessary for the words enjoyment and the body owes its existence as we shall see in the next verse to the five senses which are the properties of the mind the world is what the mind conceives through the senses 
द वर्ल्ड इज बट द फाइव फोल्ड सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स विच आर द रिजल्ट ऑफ द फाइव सेंसिस सिंस द माइंड परसीव द वर्ल्ड थ्रू द सेंसिस इज देर ए वर्ल्ड विदाउट द माइंड थ्रू द सेंसरी ऑर्गन्स लॉजेज इन द फाइव कोर्स ऑफ द सेंस इज डिस्प्ले बिफोर द माइंड ए वेराइटी ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स फिजिकल वाइटल एमोशनल मेंटल एंड इंटेलेक्चुअल अपार्ट फ्रॉम द फाइव सेंस परसेप्शन देर ऑल सोर्ट्स ऑफ अदर इंटरनल सेंसिस विच ऑल्सो अराइज फ्रॉम द माइंड वर्क थ्रू द माइंड एंड are understood by the mind such as the senses of time of space or eye and mind and the artistic ethical religious and spiritual senses for instance since all these senses form the world we know we, we known and have one common origin which is the mind the world cannot therefore be other than that mind verse number 7 the world rises and sets with the knowledge of it both have their source in the self although the world and the awareness of it rise and set together it is by awareness that the world is known the source from which they both rise and into which they both set always shines without itself rising or setting that alone is real this verse is reminiscent of the invocation and confirm the previous verse which make awareness the criterion of existence as well as the source of the world awareness always shines as the limitless i mentioned in verse 4 the eternal knower it goes without saying that the appearance of the world is simultaneously with the awareness of it and disappearance of the world simultaneous with the withdrawal of that awareness for the fact of the awareness of the world is the fact of its existence we cannot affirm the existence of an object without first affirming awareness of it therefore awareness is the only reality there is verse 8 any sincere worship eventually leads to realization in whatever name and form the nameless and formless is worshiped there in lies the path of its realization realizing one's truth as the truth of that reality and merging into it is true realization all roads lead to rome all sincere worship comes from the heart and leads to the formless god in the heart to believe that one's reality is the same as god is an important step towards the realization of him as pure consciousness and the process of merging into him how many millions of innocent human beings would have been spared the horror of religious persecutions throughout the centuries in the name of god and how many wars would have been prevented had this truth been accepted as the one truth underlying all religions the basic world faith verse number 9 the dyads and triads are supported by the one which can be discovered by inquiry the dyads and triads rest on the basic one enquiring about that one in the mind they will disappear those who see thus are the seers of truth they remain unruffled the dyads are the pairs of opposites 
knowledge and ignorance light and darkness happiness and misery birth and death etc the triad is triple principle of seen seer and sight object subject and the perception of the former by the latter a all as all the numbers stand on and originate from the first number so are the dyads and triads based on arising from and of the same nature as the one seer the perceiving mind he who realizes the world as such remains a uniform serenity in all conditions of life verse number 10 knowledge and ignorance are interrelated real knowledge arises by inquiring for whom both knowledge ignorance occur knowledge and ignorance are interrelated the one does not exist without the other enquiring to whom is it that knowledge and that ignorance and arriving at their root cause the self this is true knowledge to speak of ignorance is to admit its opposite knowledge and vice versa until we become aware of an object we remain ignorant of its existence to learn a lesson is to admit our previous ignorance of its constant knowledge is thus the light which clears away the darkness of ignorance but knowledge and ignorance which pertain to external objects are mere modes of thought they come and go and are therefore of no consequence in the search for truth what is of consequence is their knower who is fixed changeless also called first principle because he is efficient causeless the eternal thinker who precedes and survives all his thoughts the basic one verse 9 verse number 11 not to seek the self which is the source of knowledge and ignorance is real ignorance it is not ignorance to know all but the all knowing self when the latter the substratum of both knowledge and ignorance is known knowledge and ignorance themselves both disappear it is of course foolish to know about everything in the world and remain ignorant of one's own self knowledge of the perishable the universe and its contents perishes with the body and cannot be transferred to another body except perhaps as tendencies or abilities in the perishable too which may not have any spiritual value in a future life the imperishable alone endures and gives imperishable satisfaction and this lies wholly within ourselves who are the source and ground of both knowledge and ignorance that is of all experiences whatsoever verse number 12 true knowledge is self effulgent it is neither knowledge nor ignorance true knowledge is neither knowledge or ignorance objective knowledge is not true knowledge because the self is self effulgent having no second to know 
or be known, it is supreme knowledge, not empty nothingness. This continues the theme of verse 10 and 11. We have seen that objective knowledge is knowledge of the perishable, the apparent, the non-existent, the unreal, see invocation. Self-awareness is true knowledge because it is absolute, that is changeless, non-dual, ever pure, thought-free. This purity is not emptiness because of the lack of perceivable objective in it, but the ever-shining plenum of awareness beings. Chitta Satya Verse number 13. Knowledge of diversity is ignorance, yet it is not apart from the self, like the shapes of ornaments which are not apart from the gold. The self alone is knowledge, is truth. Knowledge of the diversity is ignorance, is false knowledge. Yet ignorance is not apart from the self, which is knowledge. Are the ornaments different from the gold which is real? So, the world with all its multiplicity of shapes, colors, smells, tastes, and so forth is nothing but pure consciousness in substance. Like variously shaped jewelry, which is nothing but gold, to perceive shapes, colors, smells and the like as different from one another is ignorance, is illusion. But to see them as the single substance out of which they are made, the pure mind is true knowledge. Yet ignorance is not apart from the self, because all experiences as thoughts come from the self and are witnessed by it, verse 6 and 7. So, I end this video here and will continue the rest of the verses starting from 14 in two more videos because this is a very very important spiritual topic so thank you my dear friends for watching this video with reverence and with utmost attention please thank you so much please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel thanks a lot Namaskar, my dear friends. Thanks a lot again. Namaste.